Hey kids, how's everybody out there in YouTube land today, huh? There's always something going on on Grandpa's farm. A place where you're always welcome. Come on, Lily, let's go feed. Well, today we're going to have a little bit of fun with a project that I've been working on for, well, quite a bit now. Let me get this set up here and uh, setting up my cell phone to my flashlight app because it makes things that I'm about to do really easy. So, turn on the flashlight. There it comes on. Set the phone down. So I wanted to show you how I candle eggs. I use my cell phone. It's that simple. Put the egg on a cell phone. You see how you can see through the egg? That is an unfertile egg. Or at least this is one that was um, not developed at all. <clears throat> now recently, I put a whole bunch of eggs into my brand new my brand new hova baiter. I bought a hova baiter. A couple hundred bucks. They're, they're a little spendy. 250 bucks, something like that. But it's the uh, top of the line hova baiter Genesis with the digital controls on top and uh, and it's got an egg, egg turner inside. Uh, it'll hold up to 42 duck eggs and uh, what I put in here actually I put in 38 duck eggs because that's what I had at the time when I started it, which was a couple weeks ago. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still getting over the flu here, so I'm still not uh, not great, but anyhow. Um, let's see, a little bit more than that. I've got 13 days to hatch. So 10, 10 more days or 11 more days still with the, uh, with the roller that rolls the eggs, and then a couple days without that, and we should have some baby ducks. Now, I candled, once again, I candled a bunch of eggs, and, uh, well, at least six, so, oh, dog, figures right in the middle of a video, anyhow, so let me show you what I did here, wish I could open that up, I can't zoom out anymore, alright, so here's what we do, uh, maintaining the temperature in here, 99.5 degrees, and I keep it between 45 and 50 percent humidity. Humidity on this is a little difficult. There's a little plastic tray in the bottom. You got to be careful adding water into that without spilling it too bad. But it's all fiberglass. The lid just simply lifts straight off, so I can set that to the side. And as you can see, here's all my here's all my lovely eggs sitting in here, getting fertilized. Now you can see again this egg here. You can see how. Let me zoom in on these so you guys can get a real good look. All right, you can see how you can see right through the egg. Now, let's get a fertile egg and put that on there. Notice the difference. You can't hardly see anything through that egg. You can't hardly see anything through there. That is a baby duck developing. You got absolutely no light transmission. Let me see if I can get any spot where there's some light. Okay, I can get barely. Let me get you out here. I'm going to jiggle you around here for a second. Can you see there's just a little bit of orange right down there at the bottom. You can barely make out a little bit of clear. See that? See right there, you can see a little bit of orange. Oh, nope, wrong egg. There we go, that one. Sorry. There you go, you can see a little bit of orange in that one. All right, let's try some more here. Put that one back in there. Get this one out. Put it on the light. Wrong one, there we go. Yeah, see, you can see just a little bit you can see just a little bit of orange. There we go. Let me turn that up a little bit. Oh, not quite. Just a little bit. So all the dark in this egg, all the dark up here in the top, that's all duck developing. And down there in the bottom, 
down there in the bottom is uh, what it's still digesting on. Now this one has pretty good, yep, there we go, pretty good amount of uh, undeveloped in there yet. So let's try another one. Get over here at the other end. There's another one on there. See, yep, once again, you can see just a little speck, just a little speck of light at the end of the tunnel down there. Other than that, it's completely, let me see if I can get this one to be just, see, you can see, see, you can see just a little bit of orange down the bottom, but as I roll the egg, it blocks it out. So that's a developing duck. So anyhow, here's the uh, incubator, zoom out. This little motor on here turns an arm that causes this black tray to roll back and forth and that causes the eggs to roll uh, here in the tray. So it's a pretty simple, pretty simple system. So hold on, let me get you guys set back up here. <sighs> so anyhow, as you can see, it's a pretty simple system here on the Ovibator. A couple of things you got to be careful about. When you put the lid back on, you got to make sure this wire on the far side, this wire coming out, this is the power cord for the uh, egg turner. You got to make sure it's kind of pulled out. So it doesn't get um, it doesn't get caught in the mechanism and abrade the wire. So that's just something you have to be uh, conscious of. Now let me shut my phone off here. Turn that off. So there you go. Incubating eggs. All you need is your cell phone. Okay. You don't need any kind of specialized equipment. You don't need a special flashlight or go out and spend, go out and spend money on a particular device. Uh, any light source like your cell phone would work just fine and of course you know if you're like most people you have your cell phone you know in your hand in your pocket at all times so you're gonna have it with you so why not just uh, hold on now <clears throat> sorry uh, getting over the flu guys today is uh, day 22 <laughs> that I've been sick and <clears throat> getting considerably better actually today I'm feeling much better <clears throat> so anyhow um, so what I did is uh, before when I ordered the Hova Bader it said it was going to take about seven seven days or so for it to get delivered so I started collecting the duck eggs now I've separated out my uh, uh, my apple wood I have two breeds of ducks here right now I have my Rowans which are a laying breed, but also a meat duck. And then I have my, what's known as a silver apple yard breed, which kind of looks like a rowan. Rowans look like big oversized mallards. Kind of looks like a rowan. Uh, uh, rowan, rowan, however you want to pronounce that. <clears throat> Only they're much lighter colored. They have more white in their plumage. Um, but they are more prolific layers. Now they're about the same size as a rowan. So they're still a pretty good sized meat bird. Uh, uh, but they, uh, excuse me, <coughs> oh, all these drugs I'm taking, um, but they they tend to uh, do a pretty good job of, uh, of dropping eggs. Now this is a typical duck egg. It is slightly larger than a chicken egg. It has a much larger yolk inside of it. Uh, they lay a white egg like this. Uh, typically ducks are pretty messy, so the eggs are pretty messy, so every morning I got to wash eggs. But you notice the eggs in the incubator are dirty. You don't wash eggs if you're going to put them in the incubator. Uh, when a duck lays an egg, there's a uh, slime left on the outside of the egg. That slime kind of stuff is, is like a sealant. It's like a grease on the egg. And what it does is it seals the very porous shell uh, to keep any bad stuff from getting into, into the egg. Um, eggshells are porous. Anything it makes contact with will migrate through the shell and get inside. Interesting story. One of the things that got me started in homesteading 
at a very young age is I have a sister um, who was allergic to eggs. So she would get blisters on her lips and stuff if she ate eggs. Well, over time, uh, we discovered that when we were at our farm in Ohio, uh, we were living in New York at the time, uh, when we were at our farm in Ohio and we had our own, uh, our own chickens, uh, that she could eat those eggs and that didn't give her her blister. So we finally did more research and found out she wasn't allergic to the eggs. She was allergic to what they washed the eggs in. The chemical that they used to clean the eggs is what was causing her blisters. So, as soon as we had farm fresh eggs that were unwashed in solvent, that washed, this is washed just in water, nothing else. <clears throat> she could eat those without any problem. So we started having chickens at home. Now I grew up in an area known as Sands Point in New York, very upscale neighborhood. I mean, my neighbors were literally the Guggenheims and the Vanderbilts. I mean, literally, the Guggenheims were next door. The Vanderbilts were a few few lots down from us. It was a very upscale neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> so it was kind of odd to live in that neighborhood and um, and have chickens, you know. Uh, a little side story, a little, little uh, digression here. Uh, in high school, okay, <coughs> as a guy in high school, uh, I went to a very affluent high school, needless to say. Um, I mean, our, our driver's ed class inside the school drove Volvos. We had a flight simulator as one of the classes that you could take in my high school to learn how to fly. Very affluent high school. Um, as a guy out, you know, competing with other guys for girls, uh, my next door neighbor, when, when he turned 17, um, <laughs> he got good grades one year and his father gave him a car. Now, my dad also let me use a car. I, I got to use the 10 year old Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, but my neighbor Charlie, his father gave him a Ferrari Dino. So, kind of hard competing with that on the girls' front uh, there, but uh, I made do. Anyhow, that was a little digression. So uh, don't wash your eggs in any kind of solvent. Use just water. I saved my eggs up for a week before the, ink, the hovabator got here. I plugged it in, got it set it up, got up to temperature, and I put 38 eggs in there. At the 14-day mark, uh, which was day for yesterday, actually, so 13-day mark, I candled all my eggs and found that 15 out of my 38 were not fertile. They, they look just like this one with nothing inside of it. So I removed them from the incubator. So now I only have 23 eggs incubating right now. So here's one of the reasons why I brought up this video and one of the things I want to discuss with you. I've noticed a lot of people, um, <clears throat> so-called experts in homesteading and, and raising poultry, uh, talking about breaking a hen from being um, broody. <clears throat> There's, you know, videos on how to break a hen from being broody. Folks, breaking a hen from being broody is about the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Now, I've been around chickens and farming, I mean, I'm 61 years old, and, you know, we've had chickens since the day I was born. So, um, 61, almost 62 years experience with it. <clears throat> On a homestead, money's tight you know you don't unless you're working an outside job money, money's tight if you have a YouTube channel and you're relying on your YouTube income unless you're one of the really big channels money's tight so if you have a hen who wants to set eggs and hatch biddies that you don't have to go out and buy to support your farm why would you stop her from doing that I mean that makes no sense whatsoever if, in fact, you don't want more poultry, well, that's fine. Let her set on the eggs anyway. Let her hatch out the biddies, put them on Craigslist or whatever, and sell them. It makes no sense. to. I mean, you, you have an employee wanting to do a job for you that is profitable for you, this, this hen wanting to sit and, and hatch out some chicks. Why would you stop her from doing that? That just makes no sense. I, 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 every time I see these type people talking about breaking a broody hen, it, it just boggles my mind. If I have a hen that's broody, I will separate her uh, and so she's protected and not harassed, and I'll make sure she's got a good clutch of eggs underneath of her. In fact, 
my uh, silver apple yard hen. I have one silver apple yard hen and one drake. Um, she's broody. So I separated her away from the Rowlands, gave her a private pen uh, with just the, the, the drake and the hen in there so that the two of them could be together and make more silver apple yard babies. Um, understanding duck um, reproductive systems, <clears throat> a little known fact, a hen can store the semen from the drake for weeks at a time in a compartment inside of her. And then as she's producing eggs, she can then transfer a little bit of that semen at a time into each one of those individual eggs. So, if you have a hen in a mixed flock where you've got uh, drakes from different breeds in there, um, you really won't breed true. You might have, a, in my case, a silver apple yard and a rowan mix, which isn't bad, but it's not a purebred silver apple yard or a purebred rowan. You'll have crossbreeds. So what I've done is I've separated the hen and the drake into a separate pen, let the two of them sit in there. I collected the eggs from their pen for the first couple of weeks, allowing all of that rowan semen to get processed and used out of there. So now she's isolated with just the um, uh, just just the rowan, uh, um, the silver apple yard drake. So now any eggs that she has will be fertilized and will be fertilized as a silver apple yard, both mom and dad silver apple yards, purebred chicks. So I will have more silver apple yards. Now, why do I want more silver apple yards? They lay better than a rowan does. So, and, and the only reason why I have ducks is to have eggs. Breakfast. Breakfast. So, anyhow, little anatomy lesson for you. Something to be concerned about when you're raising ducks. If you have a chicken or a duck or a turkey or a goose or an emu and it wants to set eggs, by all means, let it set on eggs. If you don't want the poultry, sell them and make some profit. They're a cash business for you. <coughs> if not, they're just building your flock. So, and even if you don't want whatever they're hatching, you know, let's say you do have crossbreeds and you don't want the mixed flock, um, put them on Craigslist and sell them. Two bucks a piece. You'll sell them like hotcakes because, uh, you know, they're five bucks anyplace else. Sell them for two bucks, sell them for three bucks, you know. Hatches ten, you got twenty bucks, that's a bag of feed. You know, so uh, it just makes no sense to not breed or, or not let a broody hen set. Please do that. Anyhow, we'll have more for you coming up in some future videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, you guys be good, be careful, take good care of one another, and we'll have more for you in the near future. Thanks, kids. Well, how about them toad suckers? Ain't they sappy? Sucking them toads all sure make them happy. Hug them, mug a toad suckers way down south. Sticking them sucky toads in their mouth. I be a toad sucker knowing a duck it. You just find an old toad and you rear back and suck it. Folks, you have a good day. Bye.